Hi there! We begin our series of video training materials about aircraft basic knowledge with fuselage and main plane topic. All this information you will need to get prepared to theory exam. So, let's start with interesting topic about basis of airplane construction. There are a lot of different types of airplanes in the world, varying by weight, by number and type of engines, by fuselage construction, by load capacity and by a lot of other features. But most interesting for us for now will be popular aircraft in the aviation schools in Europe and the United States. It's a Cessna 152 and a Piper PA28. Uh, let's take a Cessna for example. Cessna 152 is just a 750 kilograms weight. It's uh, just 1670 pounds of maximum takeoff weight has just one reciprocal piston engine with fixed pitch propeller, fixed undercarriage. It has just uh, two seats for pilots, operated in relevantly low speeds, uh, less than 110 knots, very friendly in steering, tolerant to mistakes in controlling, and has good side view because of high wings. Here there is schematic view of our Cessna airplane. So we can see fuselage, the main part of the aircraft to which wings are connected, power plant, engine and undercarriage are mounted. Fuselage is used for carrying cargo, passengers and of course pilots. So here we can see wings and uh, stabilizing surfaces which uh, we call empennage. Ok, let's move to the fuselage. So, there are three main types of fuselage construction. Framework is the oldest one, I think, monocoque and semi-monocoque as fuselage of our Cessna 152. So, uh, it's easy. So, let's move to the framework type of fuselage construction and see its pros and cons. It's really very old type. Actually, making aircrafts started with framework fuselage because this construction is very easy to build it's just made of steel tubes, longwise and diagonal, welded together. Surface of framework fuselage is not stressed, so even fabric can be used as skin of the fuselage. Good side of this type of construction, that it's very reliable. Local damages of fuselage do not cause weakening of its whole structural integrity. But it's relevantly heavy and weight and production cost and complexity grow significantly along with the size of the airplane. This is monocoque. It's a new type of fuselage construction. Fuselage is made of outside skin, supported by formers. Skin of monocoque is stressed and takes all loads that aircraft experience during its operations. This type of construction is light, but most negative side of monocoque type is that local damages of this fuselage can cause severe weakening of its structural integrity or even total collapse of the aircraft. Also, it's complicated in manufacturing. Materials of monocoque skin must be very stiff and deformation persistent. Usually stressed skin is made of self-structured self composite materials which give appropriate rigidity of construction with relevantly low weight. This type of fuselage is usually used in building mid sized aircrafts. Here comes semi monocoque. This is the most popular type of fuselage construction in recent times, used in all modern aircrafts, from lightweight aircrafts like our Cessna or Boeings and Airbuses. The reason is, this type of construction inherits positive features of both previous types that we talked about framework and monocoque. It's light, rigid, relevantly easy in construction. Common used aluminium alloys or other lightweight alloys can be used in making skin and skin supporting structure of this type of fuselage. It consists of stressed skin like monocoque, but outer skin additionally also supported by stringers like in a frame construction. Semi-monocoque fuselage has high structural integrity can bear local damages and lose local repairings of skin. Ok, enough for fuselage for now, 
Let's move on to the wing construction. We have three common types of wing construction. B planes, with actually two levels of wings joined together, braced monoplanes, and cantilever monoplanes without any supporting elements. So let's start with B planes now. This is most common wing type for old aircrafts. Actually, our aviation history started with B planes. B plane construction has uh, two levels of uh, wing surfaces or main planes, upper and lower, linked together with struts and wires. B plane construction has good rigidity, but because of uh, a lot of construction elements, uh, it's heavy and has high parasite drag. Because of high drag, B plane uh, airplanes has uh, you know low airspeed limits, uh, let's say less than 200 knots. But because of low airspeed and high lift, uh, B planes not require long runways and can be used on short grass strips. Actually, on air of B planes there was no aviation infrastructure and pilots uh, used to land and take off of any suitable piece of ground surface. As a good example of braced monoplane wing construction, we can remember Cessna 152. This is a classic construction for small airplanes. Has good rigidity because of uh, braces, braces uh, used to support wings. It has much less parasite drag in comparison, uh, comparison uh, with B-plane construction. So, braced monoplanes has high speed limits, an average up to 250 knots. Here comes cantilever monoplane. This type of wing construction is most common for contemporary high airspeed airplanes. As one of examples with this wing type, we can name uh, Piper PA-28 airplane. There can be variations with high position of wings, like uh, you know Cessna 182, they uh, have at least one modification without uh, braces. Uh, because of low parasite drag, cantilever monoplanes allow uh, high airspeeds. This type of wing is most complex in manufacturing because it has to be rigid and endure loads like bending and twisting. Wing construction is quite similar for any wing type and constructed from stringers. It's a longitudinal elements of wing which supports skin or aerodynamic surfaces of wing. Ribs place it transversal to stringers and spars and which take and transfer loads to spars. And spars, there can be one spar or more, depends on size and model of airplane. Spars are bending stressed elements which takes all loads from wing surfaces and transfer them to fuselage. Stringers, ribs and spars create set of torsion boxes which absorb twisting loads, transfer loads to spars and create good rigidity saving light weight of, of wing. Skin can be stressed or not stressed like on old airplanes. Wings usually made of aluminium alloys and usually in wing roots, parts of wing close to fuselage, gas tanks are placed inside of torsion boxes. This is a wing profile uh, so, we will discuss aerodynamic processes later. Just want to mention that for wings there are some common definitions. Leading edge, front part of the wing, trailing edge, art aft part of the wing, and uh, chord line. It's an um, imaginary plane of wing uh, laid between most remote points of leading edge and trailing edge. We use chord line to measure angle of attack for example, or apply vectors of aerodynamic forces. Ok, uh, let's go now to the tail of our airplane and find their empennage. It's a set of vertical and horizontal stabilized planes. By the way, there are other types of empennage like uh, you know, V-tail or T-tail, but this type of tail is most common. Horizontal stabilizer is used to control airplane movement, its rotation by lateral axis of airplane. That provides us 
its longitudinal stability. There is an elevator on horizontal stabilizer. It can be positioned by pilot via controls up and down. Changing position of elevator allows to change aerodynamic forces applied up on or down on the elevator. These aerodynamic forces on stabilizer controls airplane attitude position, pitching nose up or down. That allows us to control altitude. Vertical stabilizer allows to stabilize and control direction of airplane without changing actually its direction of flight. It has rudder, which position we or pilot control by pushing pedals. Deflected rudder creates lateral aerodynamic forces applied on tail from side to side and turn airplane around vertical axis. Elevator and rudder are one of the primary control surfaces. In next video we will discuss control surfaces in details. Thank you for watching. Please comment or give your advice to make this training course better. So see you in the next video.